Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk, borders, language, culture, and here he is, Michael Savage. Well, we have breaking news for you on The Savage Nation. I didn't expect this, but I think the system is starting to work. It seems to me that the system established long before these two radicals took over America, will eventually reign in these revolutionaries. What am I talking about? King Obama blocked by federal court. That's my headline on michaelsavage.com. It came out minutes ago. I had a full show prepared that had nothing to do with amnesty for illegals. But guess what happened? The system seems to be working. A federal appeals court, that's the Fifth Circuit, which is very conservative, by the way, ruled against President King Obama and said that, no, you can't make immigration law on your own. You're not a king. The U.S. Court of Appeals for the Fifth Circuit ruled in favor of Texas, which had sued to stop the amnesty for illegal aliens on all key points. They found that Obama's amnesty likely broke the law governing how big policies are to be written. Here's what the judges wrote. Quote, the public interest favors maintenance of the injunction. Now, what this means is that the revolutionary and his wife and the minions of revolutionaries around them have nothing but contempt for our Congress, contempt for the people, contempt for the Constitution, are going to have to scheme a new way to flood America with the illegals. But for right now, King Obama has been blocked by a federal circuit court of appeals. It's a huge story. And I have to say that it looks to me as though the system is beginning to work to stop the revolutionary regime. The only thing standing between us, meaning justice, uh, and the people, are the Republicans. And I'll tell you more about that in a little while. Now, my show today was not going to be about this, but this is huge news. My show is going to be on another subject. It was going to be about the revolutionaries running the country. And my show is going to be entitled, If It Walks Like a Revolutionary. If It Talks Like a Revolutionary, It Is a Revolutionary. And we were going to play Michelle Obama's revolution, revolution-inspiring speeches at Oberlin College. Once again, she did it. She can't help it. She comes out and she becomes Angela Davis every time she gives a graduation speech. Although she complained about the fact that people smeared her as being Angela Davis, she's sure doing a good job of enacting the Angela Davis within. I mean, she's channeling the Angela Davis. All she needs is a bandolier of bullets on her back, uh, over her chest, rather. Now... Something else you should know. I am sick as a dog. If I were a pilot, I wouldn't fly the plane today. Uh, But since I'm a talk show host and your life is not in my hands, just your mind, your mind is in my hands, you're going to hear a subdued, savage nation show today. I had a choice to stay off the air again. I have been hit with uh, the most severe flu of my entire life. I am throwing everything known to mankind at it. And I'm talking about all of my alternative medical knowledge, I'm talking about uh, amoxicillin for a a severe strep throat that nothing touched and I couldn't swallow. So I'm using allopathic, I'm using homeopathic, I'm using herbal medicine, and I'm using pizza and garlic, which is my mainstay mainstay cure for everything. Uh, And I'm going to tell you a little bit more about a a flu RX from my dear friend Richard A. Cunyon, MD, who is probably the greatest unsung uh, genius in the history of nutrition in this country. He's the last of the Mohegans. He knows more about nutritional medicine than anybody in the world, and he's completely unknown. It's sad because he's written many books, but he's not really a businessman, which is not to his deficit. It's to his credit. And I'm going to read you a two-page letter he sent to me, to Michael Savage, on his opinion, his Rx for my flu. So I've got that to deal with. I've got all the other stories. Michelle Obama to grads telling graduates to shape the revolution. King Obama blocked by a federal court. We have so many other stories. I may as well give you a hint of them because you're not going to believe these. Look at this one. Last week, and I missed this because I was out with the flu on Thursday, Friday, I think, right? I came in on Thursday. I shouldn't have. Uh, Obama called himself an honorary member of the tribe. That means he's Jewish. Uh, I don't doubt that because he behaves like a liberal Jew. So in that sense, I agree with him. 
As you well know, liberal Jews are the most suicidal portion of the Jewish people. Self-hating and suicidal. Everybody knows that. And then, of course, we have this, which you should not, you should not uh, uh, omit. Robert De Niro gave a speech over the weekend to NYU grads. What's shocking about this is not that another actor was chosen to give another speech instead of a scholar or instead of a, a Nobel Prize winning scientist. Have you noticed what happened to our colleges under the progressives? They almost never invite a distinguished person to give a commencement address. Forget politics. When have you last heard of a Nobel Prize winning chemist or scientist giving a commencement address? The answer is never. Not since this gang took over America. Instead, it's one communist, progressive, psychotic drug addict after another. It's either a president, a president's wife, or a, a left-wing senator. I've never seen anything like it. It's never happened in American history. So I said to you, if it walks like a revolutionary, if it talks like a revolutionary, you're living through a revolution. So De Niro gives a speech to NYU grads where he says, well, you're going to suffer because you're in the arts. Get used to it. And he said, how are you going to cope with that suffering? He said, I hear that Valium and Vica didn't work. Good advice, Robert. We'd expect nothing less from an actor. We're going to also talk about medical marijuana. We're going to talk about all the topics of the day. Let me invite you to call the show at 855-407-282. The only thing I don't want to hear from you is any remedies for a flu. Please do not call us with remedies. I know more than you do about it. And at a certain point, nothing works. You just have to pray to God that all your remedies collectively work. So let's begin at the beginning. Let's make believe there was no breaking news where King Obama was blocked by a federal court. And now let's begin with the music from Journey, intercut with the revolutionary Angela Davis, Michelle Obama at Oberlin College over the weekend. See, that is how you will rise above the noise and shape the revolutions of your time. That is how you will have a meaningful journey on those clamorous highways of life. And graduates, that is how you will carry on the proud legacy of this great institution for generations to come. So I'm here today because I'm proud of you all. I really am. I'm inspired by your commitment to service and social justice. And I'm, I'm impressed by the community that you all have created here. A warm, supportive, inclusive community that embodies the values that define this school. Today, I want to urge you to actively seek out the most contentious, polarized, gridlock places you can find. Because so often throughout our history, those have been the places where progress really happens. The places where minds are changed, lives transformed, where our great American story unfolds. If it walks like a revolutionary, if it talks like a revolutionary, you're living through a revolution. Welcome back to the Savage Nation. Why can't she shut her mouth? Why must this left-wing fanatic who got so lucky based upon a society that was an upheaval, that she rode the wave through the seat and through affirmative action to get where she is, and it's still not good enough for her. She and her husband will not be happy until this country is in ruins. Over the weekend, Baltimore had the worst murder spree, I think, in modern history, in its history. And that's all because of what? Do you think it came out of a vacuum? Isn't that part of the revolutionary plan? Did you see the headline uh, about your Baltimore? What happened? Because of Obama, Holder, Al Sharpton. You notice they dummied up Al Sharpton, if you noticed that? You notice they dummied up that rat? What, they sent him to Guyana for a few weeks on a, on a junket? Where is that rat Al Sharpton? He burned down half two cities in the country from his fat mouth, attacking police, supporting the vermin. Where is he? Where is Al Sharpton? Nowhere to be seen. Welcome to the uh, New World Order. Baltimore's bloodiest Memorial Day weekend after they neutered the police, that, nut, that moron mayor of theirs, that attorney general and a mayor, whatever their state attorney, some state attorney, 12 dead, 43 wounded in show shootings across Chicago over holiday weekend. Do you understand there's a revolution going on in this country? Do you understand the thugs are now roaming the streets free to roam because the police have been neutered by the revolutionaries in the White House? Do you understand this? 
I guess not. And by the way, I know this. This is a fact. Most people are not even home yet this week. They're, they're off this week. Dead. Dead as a doornail. That's licking ice cream somewhere. I don't know. They're licking ice cream, walking with the shorts. Mr. and Mrs. John Q. Schmuck. They're on vacation somewhere. Every other day, the children are out of school for another training session. They put the child on Adderall or Ritalin. They take the child on another vacation. The child comes out an incompetent moron who was number 75 in the world in math and science, but he's way up on his lesbian, gay, transgendered, uh, whatever, uh, knowledge. He's way up there on LGBT and, wait, global warming. Him and the Pope know as much about global warming as my dog Teddy does. But we had good news today, didn't we? Because a federal court blocked Obama's amnesty for illegal aliens. If you care to join the program on this Helter Skelter Day, the phone number is 855-400-7282. I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. My Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. It's the only company I trust to protect my wealth. Call 800-B-U-Y-C-O-I-N. The great moments of our history are not decades in our past. They're happening right now, today in our lifetimes. Just think about the folks who are winning those battles state by state, city by city, to ensure that everyone in this country can marry the person they love. How think about how is, just 10 how years ago, gay marriage was legal and just- I can't li You know, I can't listen to a whiny lecturing voice anymore. I met some people over the weekend. I, I, I don't even know if I was out this weekend. I was so sick. So maybe I dreamed it. And one guy said to me, whatever he hears her whiny, her voice, she, he turns the show off. They won't listen to her. They won't listen to him anymore. They hate them. They're actually hated. You know that they're a hated pair? And if it wasn't for this machine, this billion-dollar machine around them, this propaganda machine, they'll go down in history as the most divisive hated pair in the history of the presidency. But that's not the important thing. Is The important thing is they got stopped today. The system seems to be working. It's a very big story, a federal appeals court. Many of you have no faith in the courts. But it happened. Obama's amnesty was punched in the nose today, an hour ago. They upheld an injunction against his deportation ruling. It's the second major legal setback for the revolutionary in the White House, for the revolutionary administration that thinks it can function as a law unto itself. The Fifth Circuit said, not so fast. The judges said that you don't have the power to do this on your own. And you can't rig the system because you don't like the system. Now, there's many different reports on this. Federal appeals court deals blow to President Obama's amnesty, says Stephen Dinan at the Washington Times. The very left-wing Associated Press has a different headline. Court won't lift hold on Obama immigration action. No one knows what that means. You see how they, how they write a headline that you can't even understand? So if the average moron, let's say, licking an ice cream cone right now at Disneyland is walking around, he looks into a machine, a, 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 a machine, or he's in an airport and he gets beaten up with CNN news, they don't know what that means. Court won't lift hold on Obama immigration action. They say, well, oh, 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 I guess that's good for Obama. That's all they saw. This shows you the propaganda. But the only one who wrote the correct headline is me, Michael Savage. My headline is King Obama blocked by Fed court, and I have a picture of him on my website as a king, sitting on a royal chair. That's who he thinks he is, a king. That's all. 855-400-7282. What do you want to talk about? My flu prescription. The, I got to play the Robert De Niro piece. I shouldn't wait, I shouldn't wait on this. So he gives a speech over the weekend at NYU, another, another institution of lower living that was once a decent school. NYU was always a B school. It was never an A. At, at one point in its history, it had become a B. It's now fallen back to, dis, to some level of disrespect in the university community. So who do they pick to give a graduation speech? An actor? All right. They can't pick a scholar. They can't find a, an alumnus who did something distinguished in a field of science. They have to go to an actor. And he's a fine actor, by the way. I like his acting. His politics are as stupid as the character he plays in the gangster movies. His politics match that of some of the moronic Italian gangsters he plays in some of his movies, whose, whose only answer to anything is beat, beat a person up. So 
Let's listen to Robert De Niro, the genius now, giving a speech at NYU in 25. Thank you for inviting me to celebrate with you today. Tisch graduates, you made it. And you're f***ed. Now, did you hear what he just said? Think about that. It. Hold it, hold it. He had to use the word F word, the F word, to show how cool he is. It's very sad when an old man has to revert to the F word to get the attention of the young potheads in the audience. He's, oh, and you're F, think about that. And the idiots laugh, of course. It's a laugh line. It goes on to 26. This is the next one. Listen. You discovered a talent, developed an ambition, and recognized your passion. When you feel that, you can't fight it. You just go with it. When it comes to the arts, passion should always trump common sense. You aren't just following dreams, you're reaching for your destiny. You're a dancer, a singer, a choreographer, a musician, a filmmaker, a writer, a photographer, a director, a producer, an actor, an artist. Yeah, you're f So you got to say the F word again in case you missed it the first time. This shows you the level of intellect going on in the colleges today. Not a PhD in chemistry or microbiology, not, not someone of distinction, instead someone who plays low-life uh, killers and actors very well, by the way. Then he tops it off by telling them to become drug addicts, in my estimation, in the next one. Listen to this now. It's inevitable. It's what graduates call the real world. You'll experience it auditioning for a part or a place in a company. It'll happen to you when you're looking for backers for a project. You'll feel it when doors close on you while you're trying to get attention for something you've written and when you're looking for a directing or a choreography job. How do you cope with it? I hear that Valium and Vicodin work. I, I'm going to rest my case. The man plays pimps, gangsters, villains of the lowest kind. He made a fortune playing villains. And I've enjoyed every one of his villainous roles. Can you explain to me why a university would invite this man to give us a speech at a, to a university class? Is that inspiring? Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. It's inevitable. It's what graduates call the real world. You'll experience it auditioning for a part or a place in a company. It'll happen to you when you're looking for backers for a project. You'll feel it when doors close on you while you're trying to get attention for something you've written and when you're looking for a directing or a choreography job. How do you cope with it? I hear that Valium and Vicodin work. So the entire world has become the Academy Awards. Everything is at the lowest common denominator. So they invite a low-life actor who has no, no inspirational guidance to the students Great actor he is. Don't take that away from him for one second. I've enjoyed every low-life degenerate role he's ever played. Even his comedic roles are great. Why didn't they invite a soldier with an education, let's say a master's degree soldier who came back from combat to inspire the students and say to them, these setbacks that you might have as a young actor or whatever are minor compared to what we faced in Iraq. And we found that we coped not by using Valium or Vicodin, but we found that we cope by believing in America. Or we found we cope by believing in God. How come you haven't heard that at a university? Because they become cesspools, institutions of lower learning. They're going lower and lower and lower. Do you get it? And it's all because of Angela Davis and Stokely Carmichael in the White House. Do you get that as well? Because they debased the White House and they debased the presidency Every other institution in America has devolved in this country to the lo a lower level. That's my estimation. WABC, Marianne, you don't agree with me, I guess. You like De Niro's telling him to use Vicodin, I think. Um, actually, he didn't tell them to use Vicodin. What he told them was that's not the way to go. And he was speaking to the... Wait, 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 no, no, you, you're, you're reversing it. He said, I hear that Vicodin and Valium work. No, if you listen to the whole thing, he then continued on and said... That's not my choice. Oh, so what is his choice? Pizza or beating someone up, up with brass knuckles? But he was with speaking to a class of actors. Oh, I'm sorry. I don't have the nuance to understand it. I get it. They're in, a special, they're in a special category. After four years of using drugs, they have a certain nuance that I don't have. I get it. 
No, he pretty much told them that they were going to be waiters because of the profession that they chose to major in. So he was pretty honest with them. Why didn't they have someone who has a, P- a Nobel Prize in chemistry instead of an actor who plays thugs and pimps? Because he was speaking to the school of art. He was speaking to actors, mm-hmm. directors. Well, but and- don't you understand that some of these phony actors might one day have to play a soldier? Or one of these phony little children might have to one day play a scientist? Wouldn't it be better for them to actually see a scientist or a soldier rather than another, a fellow actor, a fellow thespian? Well, as if I was in... As you well know, they're not exposed to anyone outside their little limited circle, are they? Everyone they meet is the same. They all are in a little closed circle. So wouldn't it be nice to invite someone to an art school who isn't an artist? If I'm going to my commencement, I want to hear from somebody who spoke, who speaks to my major. If I was a chemist, I'd want to hear from a chemist. He was speaking to... I see. All right, so you liked him referencing Vicodin and Valium. Again, in the context, he did not... How do you know the context? You know something we don't know. I actually listened to his whole speech and not just the points that you cut out to make your point. So your point is that he's a noble character who was literally lifting up the graduates at the Tisch School of, uh, of Phony Arts. My point is, if people really want to hear what Robert De Niro said, they should Google it and listen to the whole commencement address, not just the... Well, no, we heard enough of it. Why would he say, I hear that Vicodin and Valium work? He didn't say it worked. Uh, turn it on. Uh, Robert, play it again so that this woman can finally hear it again. It's inevitable. It's what graduates call the real world. You'll experience it auditioning for a part or a place in a company. It'll happen to you when you're looking for backers for a project. You'll feel it when doors close on you while you're trying to get attention for something you've written and when you're looking for a directing or a choreography job. How do you cope with it? I hear that Valium and Vicodin work. And a big laugh line. Now, he probably modified it afterwards with saying, but I don't use it. I would think that there are actors out there who would say, I find that reaching to God at those moments works for me after I've been rejected 50 times. There are some Christian actors, by the way, who believe in God. I think that guy McConaughey or whatever his name is, I don't remember his name. Isn't he a God-fearing man? How come he's never invited to give a speech? I think he is, but it's in the Bible Belt, not in New York, where they hate God and they hate uh, anything to do with religion. Uh, They dance around the golden idol. WDRC, Barbara, go ahead. You're on the Savage Nation. Robert De Niro has played all kinds of hideous uh, pigs on the screen, pimps and and degenerates. And it turns out he really wasn't acting. He's just playing himself. Well, you don't like his acting. I actually said I like his acting, but I think that choosing an actor to give a commencement address at a university is a mark of the decline of our society. All right, it's dragging everyone further down into the mud and... And he did that willingly, and I don't, I don't respect him for that, and I think... Well, not only... Let's put aside the Valium Vicodin line. Can anyone justify him saying you're effed to an audience with parents and children there? Why would he have to go to that level of using you're effed to an audience? If he really had any brains, he wouldn't have to do that, would he? No, he wouldn't. Parents and children... He's sounding like that degenerate comedian, Louis C.K., one of the lowest minds on the planet. One of the sickest minds in the history of mankind, in my opinion. They're all trying to outdo each other with sickness and degeneracy. That's my point. Right, that's, and that's the style in Hollywood. And, and my point... Right, was- it's as though he gave a speech at someone's mansion in Bel Air, at a fundraiser, let's say, when nobody was recording it. I, I take offense at what he said. I don't like hearing the word F to a mixed audience of parents and grandparents. I don't care if they're graduates in the arts. You know, in other countries, arts graduates study the classics before they become an actor. They have to learn all of Shakespeare's plays before they become an actor in England. They don't just have to act out pimps and prostitutes in order to satisfy their sick professors. He has no respect for himself or even for the profession. Look, I've known that De Niro, I've heard that De Niro had very, very left wing views. I never paid attention to them because I could care less what actors think. I like to see them perform. To me, they're marionettes, and some of them are very entertaining. I don't turn to them for inspiration. But why would a college go to a man like him for inspiring an inspiring speech to their graduates? 
That's the whole, that's the complaint I have. And it's the same with uh, Michelle Obama at Oberlin. Where does she have the nerve to get up and talk about revolution as though she's been suffering her whole life? How does she have the audacity to do that? It's beyond me. She is repulsive and repugnant and telling people to, uh, to start the revolution. Uh, she should not be in. A, where are the white jackets? Take these people away. They have no business being where they are. Well, I don't know about the white jackets. I know about the red scarves, the Khmer Rouge. They're waving across every American campus. So there she was, concerned about social justice as though she's still down with the people. Here's a woman who's such a hypocrite that she has 72 personal assistants in and around the White House catering to her every whim. And yet she's acting as though she's one of the little people in the streets of Baltimore. I mean, how much can you take of this crap? It's unbelievable to me. Let's go to the callers. I think you like this topic. KBOI. Terry, go ahead, please. I think we're going to stick with this for a while. I said that the, uh, the court overturned Obama's amnesty, basically. They blocked him again. That's a huge story, by the way. Huge story. And I actually have faith that the system is starting to work. You know, instead of line one, hold Terry for a minute. I really should take line four, because Harry doesn't agree with me. The big story is that it happened an hour ago. Federal Appeals Court, Fifth Circuit, ruled in favor of Texas against Obama's amnesty. Huge story, monster story. King Odama, Odama, King Odama was stopped by a federal court. King Odama was stopped. Now what is he gonna do now? Maybe the system is working. As screwed up and as sluggish as the system is. And by the way, Obama, being the di dictator he is, the petty dictator that he is, is actually testing the limits of our democracy. We will find out whether this system actually works only if he is stopped. Because only if the system actually stops this madman will we find out that we have a system of checks and balances. If this madman is not stopped, ultimately, it means that we have no system to count on. Do you get that as well? Harry WABC, you're not as comforted as I am, are you? Well, I was a Boy Scout, a soldier, and then a cop for 20 years. And now I'm afraid of my own government. I believe that they don't follow the law and they're going to do whatever they want no matter what the court says. So you think that even though Obama's been told to stop, cut it out, and don't bring it anymore, he'll do it anyway? Does he follow the law? Has he followed the law in these years that he's been in the White House? No. Could he start doing it now? No, I'm asking, well, if we had an opposition party and he did it again and he went around the judge, they'd have a federal uh, a sergeant at arms arrest him. It's happened before. Okay. He could be arrested for violating the law. He's only a citizen, isn't he? What's the difference between McConnell and Harry Reid? Wait, the difference between McConnell and Harry Reid is a black eye. That's it. Well, I, did you ever hear me support McConnell at any stage in the last few years? I always thought he was a fraud. And, you know, you should never forget that Kentucky is a crime-ridden state. You know that, don't you? Yes. Does anyone know that? Everyone says Kentucky. That What's the first thing that comes to your mind? Horses and bluegrass, if you're dealing caricatures. But Kentucky is a crime-ridden state. Did you know that? Where do you think McConnell came from? What do you think? McConnell was some upstanding citizen? He's shown that he will put a knife in your back at the first sign of uh, trouble for America. He's the reason Obama got away with the trade deal. So we're going to see what's happening, what's going to happen now that Obama's been blocked by the federal court. We will see if McConnell and Bain are ra uh, rage, uh, excuse me, race to his rescue. Again, I apologize slightly in advance, but I really shouldn't apologize. You should thank me that although I'm too sick to fly an airplane, and if I were a pilot, I would have called in sick because your life would be in my hands and I wouldn't trust myself to fly. I trust myself to talk. My mind is working fine. My voice is a little sore. But I got to tell you, I'm doing much better than I was doing Thursday and Friday night. I couldn't swallow. Did you ever have one of those? Have you ever had a strep throat that's so severe that every time you swallow, you double over in pain? You can't swallow your own saliva? I hadn't experienced that since I was five years old. And let me tell you something. Children can cope with it better than adults because all they do is cry. But adults don't know how to cry. So what they do is they bang their fists against the table. I couldn't swallow. Well, here I am three days later, and I feel much better, and I felt obligated to go on the radio, and I hope that you're not impeded by my 
uh, my voice tonight because I'm doing the best I can. I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. My Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com, the only company I trust to protect my wealth with gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. And finally, while peaceful protests can be powerful, if we truly want to reform our criminal justice system, then we need to come together and do the hard work of changing our laws and policies to reflect our values. The hard work of burning a city down. That's the way to get it done, Michelle. Shame on you. Look what we have in the White House. Look what we have in the White House. Telling grad Well, Oberlin College to begin with is an embarrassment. When you say Oberlin, you know, it has a certain meaning to it. Oberlin. What does it mean? Oberlin means a, a university or a college, rather, that brainwashes the children to the farthest degree of left-hood, left-hoodedness. So she wants them to shape the revolutions of their time. Just think about that. Think about what that means. That's a first lady. Is that inspiring, telling children to shape a revolution? No, I don't understand how anyone can see that. By the way, Ferguson protesters are now protesting over not getting paid. You know, Sharpton is rent the mob type of thing. Well, it actually was true. Some of the protesters who looted, rioted, burned buildings and overturned police cars in Ferguson, Missouri last year were promised payments of up to $5,000 per month to join the protests. Did you know this? It was a group called Moore a successor to Acorn, and they offered them 5000 a month to loot, riot, burn, and overturn police cars. I guess that's what Mrs. Obama means by uh, changing the laws. You know, you, gotta, you wanna make an omelet, you gotta break a few eggs. Well, anyway, when this group didn't pay them, they stiffed the protesters, the vermin launched a sit-in protest at their headquarters of Moore, and they're demanding their money. Can you imagine getting paid $5,000 a month for running around holding up a sign and burning down an occasional McDonald's? That's $1,250 a week. By the way, this group more is funded by liberal, psychotic billionaire George Soros. George Soros is, frankly, should be arrested by Interpol, in my opinion. He's a roving maniac who is out to destroy this country with a vendetta I'll never understand. They say that Soros is a Holocaust survivor. Why would a Holocaust survivor who made billions, if not more, on changing money in the back of the temple, meaning trading currencies, why would he have such a hatred for capitalism? Why would he have such a hatred for the America that took him in from the Holocaust? I'll never understand it. There's no answer to it other than liberalism is a mental disorder. But there's more to it than that. It's all about money. Never forget that the thing that motivates people from top to bottom is generally money. And when you look at George Soros, you've got to understand that if he's funding these protests and they're becoming more and more radicalized, there's a reason for it, and it has to be money. Meanwhile, Osha, Michelle Obama tells graduates to shape the revolutions. Shape the revolutions. What does she mean by that? What does she mean by shape the revolutions? Does anyone have any uh, ideas on that? Terry on KBOI Radio, welcome to the program. Hey, uh, Dr. Savage. Uh, nice to talk to you. Um... You know, people don't realize that, uh, you know, up until just the last hundred years, actors were considered pretty much outcasts of society. And right. Even I understand that act actors were considered fundamentally equal to a, to a prostitute or a whore, in other words. Right. And we, we, we've embraced their, their... So then why in this society have actors been elevated to royalty? How did that happen? Because... People... If, I mean, if the actor held up as role, were held up as role models because of their sterling lifestyle, I could understand it. But usually they're the sickest members of our society with no saving graces whatsoever other than a pretty face and a good behind. So how, why is this? And why does it run from the White House to Hollywood, the same exact mentality? Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE. 855-400-7282. Savage.
Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk, borders, language, culture, and here he is, Michael Savage. I'm going to keep it short. Number one, put God first. The Alpha put and Omega. In everything you do. Wait, you got to stop here. Denzel Washington, I've always loved him as an actor. He said, put God first. We have a tale of two actors right here. We have Denzel referencing God, De Niro referencing Vicodin. In the last hour, we were, we were shocked that Robert De Niro would show, show such bad taste. For a man of such good taste to show such bad taste as to use the F word several times in a commencement speech to get the attention of the, the children, insulting the parents and grandparents with his F word. I guess he thought he was in Harvey Weinstein's billiards room. See, this is the problem with some people. They get so powerful in their own minds that they think that everything is a continuation of their living room. So he didn't understand how embarrassed, how embarrassing it was for so many people for him to reference uh, the F word, De Niro now, and to also talk about Vicodin and, and Valium, even though he modified it slightly thereafter. And I said to you, what is wrong with our colleges that they're hiring such lowlifes as commencement speakers today? Where are the engineers, scientists, soldiers, priests who used to speak? Where are they? What happened to this country? And then we just found this one, Denzel Washington. Listen right now to a man who we all should look up to. So I'm going to keep it short. Number one, put God first. Everything that you think you see in me, everything that I've accomplished, everything that you think I have, and I have a few things, everything that I have is by the grace of God. Understand that. It's a gift. He went on to say, when I was young and started really making it as an actor, I came and talked to my mother and said, Mom, did you think this was going to happen? I'd be so big and I'll be able to take care of everybody and I could do this and I could do that. She said, boy, stop it right there. Stop it right there. Stop it right there, he continued. His mother said, if you only knew how many people have been praying for you, how many prayer groups she put together, how many prayer f talks she gave, how many times she splashed me with holy water to save my sorry behind. So there you have a tale of two actors, Denzel Washington referencing God as his inspiration, De Niro referencing himself and the loneliness of Hollywood as his pathway through life. I guess it's uh, the adage, different strokes for different folks. The phone number here is 855-407-282. There's a big story, and it's a huge story, and it's a big loss for the would-be dictator in the White House. And you shouldn't overlook the importance of it. I believe it shows the system is working. He was blocked again. A major federal case against him will not permit him to go ahead on his executive action. They upheld the lower court, in other words. <laughs> Federal appeals court refuses to lift temporary hold on President Obama's executive action that could shield from deportation as many as 5 million illegal, al illegal aliens living in the U.S. Sorry for my voice. I told you I'm getting over a flu. I'm on the mend, but it's going to be quite, this could be a two-week job. I can tell you right now, I've, I've never been this sick in my adult life, never. I don't, even know, I don't know where I got it from. These killer flus are running around, and I've always boasted about, you know, the three Vs. What did I say? Vitamins, vodka, and vitriol? Well, they all failed me. <laughs> they all failed me. None of that worked on, on this case. Hey, look, I'm so honest with you. I'll tell you exactly what. I could have lied to you and said I'm getting better because I'm using only vitamins. It's not. I had to take penicillin, amoxicillin, in addition to massive doses of vitamins, in addition to homeopathic syrups to stop the cough. I mean, when I cough, my ribs hurt. I feel like I could break a rib from the coughing. That's how bad it's gotten. And if it wasn't for the homeopathic syrup, I think that I would have broken a rib over the weekend. So I'm using every known remedy, allopathic, homeopathic, and herbal that I know of. And I think I'm on top of it. But I feel, truthfully, my voice is starting to hurt me right now in hour number two. 
And to be honest with you, if, uh, if I had any sense, I wouldn't be on the air right now. But it's not the way it works. Either you're in for a penny. If you're in for a penny, you're in for a pound. So I'm here for the whole show. That's all. If I didn't think I could do it. So I promised you that I would talk about a flu prescription that my friend sent me. And his name is Richard Cunyon, MD. I've known Richard for 40 years. He's one of the great unsung heroes of orthomolecular medicine, meaning nutritional medicine. I got to tell the story for a couple of reasons, because he knows more about nutritional therapy than anyone on earth. And a lot of it's been lost because of the rush towards pharmaceuticals. There was a time that this country was moving away from drugs and moving towards uh, complementary medicine. That's all changed. What's happened is the government under the Democrats has now tried to destroy the vitamin movement again. You wouldn't believe it. The Democrats once again are behind trying to make vitamins illegal. Did you know that? I'm making a very political story for you. There was a time that vitamin usage was illegal in America, mega doses. And then that was all changed, I believe, in the, in the, late, in the early 60s. And to his credit, Orrin Hatch, because he's from a herbal producing state at that time of Utah, he worked very hard to free uh, these nutrients, including herbal re remedies, from uh, federal laws. And we've had a lot of freedom. Health freedom has been launched in America, which is why you're allowed to go buy vitamins and prescribe for yourself. In other words, it's given you a lot of power over your own health, hasn't it? We're not saying throw out all of modern medicine. It'd be crazy to say that. So nevertheless, there's now a movement now to restrain the use of uh, uh, vitamins, herbs, homeopathy, you name it. And so way back when I got my doctorate from Berkeley in 78, Richard Cunyon, who, uh, who, was, who was still, I, I don't see him that much, was the head of the Orthomolecular Medical Society. And he lived in a large home on top of Pacific Heights, and he would have these sessions every Tuesday night with young doctors, some young, they were all younger, all in the alternative medical field. They're all medical doctors, and they were all medical doctors who took a chance by going into uh, alternative medicine. And they'd have these seminars in his basement, or his house, and I started to attend, and he invited me to speak at a conference, I'll never forget it, in Los Angeles, it was interesting, at one of the Omni Hotel, I think. And that was the beginning of my um, relationship with uh, this whole group of physician, uh, physicians oriented towards nutrients. And one of my best friends I met through that group called Robert F. Cathcart III, one of the greatest human beings I've ever known. He died about five years ago. Great man, just all around great man. And the thing was is that Cathcart was an orthopedic surgeon. He wasn't a marginal MD of the type that writes medical marijuana prescriptions today. He was a sterling, you know, Stanford grad, sterling credentials, orth orthopedic surgeon in Lake Tahoe, and something happened while he was treating people for broken bones on the ski trails. He found that those who were self-medicating with vitamin C while getting over a broken bone healed much quick, more quickly than those who were not using vitamin C. And he started to investigate this, and he found the miraculous healing properties of vitamin C, Cathcart did. And through him I met Linus Pauling, one of the great geniuses of our time, who has now been forgotten because of the smear job done by the drug industry and, and the Mayo Clinic in particular. These are giants. These were giants. These men have a good body of literature. So, I mean, I've studied with them, learned from them, work with them. So anyway, I got sick, and my friend heard it on the show last week, Thursday. I didn't call him and say, hey, I'm sick. What should I do? And he sends me a letter. Richard Cunyon, MD, says, hey, Michael, I would have called in your show to chime in about orthomolecular progress in treating viral infections, including flu, polio, Ebola, HIV, and more. But I have a time deadline, so I thought you might be interested in these ideas. Here's what he thought I should take for my quicker recovery. One, I'm reading his letter now. Look him up, K-U-N-I-N, M-D. Selenium is depleted by the influenza family of viruses and others of the enterovirus family. This disables the anti-inflammatory system of the host and enables multiplication of the virus and the production of huge amounts of hydroxy and oxygen-free radicals which cause membrane damage and optimal media for viral growth. In addition, the free radical burden disables the intracellular transport of B12, thus disabling the production of methionine and S adenosyl. I can't even read this one. This is too many syllables for me. It's SAM. This disables the conversion of methylfolate to THF. This then interferes with methylation of thymine. And he goes on. In summation, Michael, selenium replacement maintains antioxidant function, 
of glutathione peroxidase at the same time that it supports function of vitamin B12 required for production of SAM and its progeny. Homocysteine, which is converted into cysteine and glutathione. The final benefit is that the glutathione protects the hydro hydroxycobalamin transport system to maintain this methylation cycle. I'll stop right there. That's paragraph one of a three-page letter. The short and long of it is that he wants me to take selenium. Number two, he says vitamin B12, and he explains why. Then he says vitamin B2, riboflavin, and why I should be taking that. You, you probably don't know much of this. Step four, he says vitamin C is the primary water-soluble antioxidant. However, in high doses, some of you don't know this. However, in high dosages, some vitamin C is converted into a prooxidant form. Did you know that? Dehydroascorbate, which is irritating, but not all bad. In fact, after a few days, as the acute infection subsides, one is left with damaged tissues, sore throat, persistent cough, and symptoms that can go on for weeks. Oh, God. Okay. Uh, five, vitamin E. Mix the cough rolls, our primary membrane protectors. So I'm taking a lot of vitamin E. Six, herbal antioxidants such as ginkgo, curcumin, and milk thistle. Seven, beta E and glycine and taurine. And then here's the one that I think you'll find most interesting, and I'll summarize this paragraph of the letter from my friend. Finally, Michael, it is wise to see the big picture. Flu is not just an acute nuisance these days. Such infections are more stressful than the common cold. Remember, CFIDS is often heralded by viral infection. Chronic fatigue immune dysfunction syndrome. Many patients suffer for years, even unto death from this travesty. A clinical study uh, showed that two-thirds of chronic CFIDS patients recovered in two months on a methyl support nutrient regimen. But the resistant cases probably have post-viral damage to endocrine and hepatic renal detox systems, as well as less obvious damage to brain due to demyelination during the time of cobalamin transport blockade, blockade by oxidative stress. Such damage has been overlooked as a possible complication of viral infection. I won't go on because I think many of you are turning the show off right now. The important thing for you to know is that there are many, many things in nutrition that you think you know and you know nothing about. Many of you do some of the right things, but you're only at the infant stage of knowledge and nutrition. And it's gonna get worse and worse and worse because there's a giant conspiracy from the pharmaceutical industry and the medical establishment itself to keep you on the allopathic remedies and not the nutritional support mechanisms. I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Your Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. It's the only company I trust for tangible assets, gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. See, that is how you will rise above the noise and shape the revolutions of your time. That is how you will have a meaningful journey on those clamorous highways of life. And graduates, that is how you will carry on the proud legacy of this great institution for generations to come. That's how you'll get 72 personal assistants and make believe you're down with the people. That's how you'll abuse the American people and make believe you're with the people. That's how you'll go on vacations at public expense and make believe that you're poor. That's how you'll move your mother into the White House and make the morons pay for it. That's how you do it. And then, of course, her husband is even a bigger joker than she is. This is the, the most astonishing lie I've ever heard in my life. Clip 12, please. This, this is unbelievable, this one. And I can say that no U.S. president, no administration has done more to ensure that Israel can protect itself than this one. Are you kidding me? The man is racing to let Iran get the nu a nuclear bomb. And the Jews applaud. It, you know, I could say something right now, but I, it's at the risk of my career to repeat it. I don't know that it's insulting. I, I don't understand how liberal Jews survive. They can be geniuses in medicine, brilliant in business, brilliant in banking, brilliant in so many fields, but have no common sense about their own survival. And they keep voting for a man like this, who has done more and more and more to uh, undermine Israel than any president since Israel has been founded. Yet when he tells the lie to the Jews, in front of the Jews, 
No, president's done more to ensure that Israel can protect itself than this one. That's total lie. It's a total lie. And then it gets worse in clip 13. You have to hear this. This is a, sh- a shocker and disgusting. Earlier this week, uh, I was actually interviewed by one of your members, Jeff Goldberg. And Jeff reminded me that he once called me the first Jewish president. Ugh. Uh, now, Jeff. since some people still seem to be wondering about my faith, uh, I should... <laughs> I should make clear this was an honorary title, uh, but I was flattered. He goes on. Wait, it gets even more nauseating. This is something only Woody Allen could find appealing. Listen to 14. And as an honorary member of the tribe. Disgusting. Uh, not to mention somebody who's hosted seven White House satyrs and been Big advised deal. by... And oh, been God. advised by two Jewish chiefs of staff. Oh, God. I can also... Uh, probably say that uh, I'm getting a little bit of the hang of the lingo, but I will not hang use of any lingo? of the uh, Yiddishisms that Rahm Emanuel taught me because <laughs> I want to be invited back. Let's just say he had some creative new synonyms for shalom. Mm-hmm. Such a schmuck. Would that be a synonym for shalom in, in Rahm Emanuel's vernacular? Okay, we know what a politician does. They pander. So in front of Jews, he's a Jew. In front of Muslims, he's a Muslim. They're comedians, in other words. There's nothing unusual about that. And then he goes on Memorial Day, and he has a picture tweeted out of him sucking on an ice cream cone, slurping an ice cream cone, with, and, and tweets out having a good Memorial Day. No mention of the troops. That's the schmuck in chief. That's the country that you're living in now. In the next segment coming up, I have a real, real, real big treat for you. I couldn't get to it last week, but it's the story of medical marijuana from the man who discovered weed's secret ingredient, Raphael Meshulam, who had the honor of meeting in Israel in 1978, by the way. He invited me to teach there and do research there, but I, for many reasons, didn't accept that. You'll meet the man who discovered weed's secret ingredient when I return right here on The Savage Nation. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Shamans, physicians, and pharmacists have dabbled in the notion of marijuana as medicine for thousands of years, but the relief patients feel is largely anecdotal. Marijuana status as a Schedule I drug means that according to the federal government, it has no accepted medical use. The U.S. government strictly controls all American marijuana studies, and researchers who want to study cannabis must obtain it from this facility at the University of Mississippi. By some accounts, the supply is extremely limited and of questionable quality. And some scientists claim that if their research might show potential positive medical uses for marijuana, their requests are rejected. It's a charge the government denies. But in other nations, getting cannabis to scientists is less complicated. Israel is among the leaders in medical marijuana research. From his lab bench in Jerusalem, Raphael Meshulam has fathered nearly two generations of peer-reviewed medical research. He first discovered THC in 1964. Cannabis, although it had been investigated, nobody had really isolated it in pure form, and uh, neither were all the other compounds uh, there. So I thought that it's high time that somebody should do that. For 40 years at Hebrew University, researchers study effects of THC and other cannabinoids on people and laboratory animals. Meshulam dissolves the THC in an oil-based solution. In this form, measured doses can be administered accurately. Researchers here have witnessed promising results in the treatments of brain trauma, diabetes, cancers, and osteoporosis. 
אז איך נהנית במחנה שלנו? 20 year old E.L. פרייזלר underwent a bone marrow transplant a year and a half ago. Since then, his body experiences a chronic quasi-rejection called graph versus host disease. I am treated by the THC drops for two months already, meaning that I just started and I already saw changes, whether it is the digestive system, the diarrhea that has gone, and my skin that was very hard is now softer and back to its original state. My appetite is back. It significantly increases the appetite and I actually gained four kilos in the past two months. I need to gain a lot more weight to get back to where I was. Each dose that EL takes is as measured as any prescribed medicine. Most marijuana taken as medicine in America is not. Medical marijuana in the States means use of marijuana uh, against uh, diseases. Now, from my point of view, medical marijuana is not well defined. It should be better defined. If you take aspirin, you want to take 500 milligrams of aspirin. You don't want to say, well, I don't know how much I'm getting, 20 milligrams or 2 grams. I don't see any difference why one should have a different attitude when works with, working with marijuana. Uh, and if marijuana can have anything between 2% and 20%, THC, I don't think that this is the right way to do it. One thing is certain, much cannabis today has no resemblance to the plant of our ancestors. This weed, the proverbial sow's ear of yesterday's cannabis, has become a silk purse. Life seems to be very complicated in every place of the world. Most of us are anxious from time to time. Most of us are depressed from time to time. We want to change that. And uh, in, <clears throat> in many cases, such a change can be brought forward by cannabis. So that's why people use it. That's all. So if a stranger walked up to you and poured pebble-like seeds into your hand and then said, plant them and your harvest can be made into rope, cloth or paper, it could help the sick or intoxicate. What would you say? Would you keep the seeds or chuck them away? I, I would turn this off now and here's what I would say. I would say that in America, medical marijuana is a travesty. In America, medical marijuana is used just to get high. In America, medical marijuana was pushed by George Soros, and I can prove it, because I fought against his institutions in 1998 when he was trying to pass medical marijuana initiatives in Arizona and California. And I would say in America, medical marijuana is a misnomer. Other than that, I have no opinion on the matter. Now, I know that that was a slow-moving segment, but I felt that it was very important to finally let you understand where I'm coming from on marijuana, I totally believe that the active principles of marijuana should be used in diseases, in designated dosages. I'm totally opposed to using marijuana to get high because it has very deleterious effects on brains, especially developing young brains. And I think that in America, the idea of medical marijuana has been used strictly to dumb down the society. Now let's move back to politics per se. Again, you know the big story of the day, federal, a federal appeals court overturned Obama's amnesty once again in plain English. It's a huge story. You're going to hear more and more about it tomorrow when, you, when it sinks in. Obama got kicked in the teeth once again by a federal court. The question is, what will this despot do? Since he's a member of the tribe, we can only guess how lawyers behave. As you well know, lawyers look to get around the law. So in that regard, I suppose he is a lawyer. WJR Richard, thanks for holding you on the Savage Nation. What's on your mind? Is he there? Richard? I guess they all went to sleep on the medical marijuana piece. Uh, let's try the next one. WEZS Radio. Steve, did he wake up back there or is the call screener out for uh, pizza? Is anyone in the back room? We'll try one more now. Roger on WBOB. Let's see if he's awake. Roger, what's on your mind? Uh, thank God, Dr. Savage. I'm glad I waited. It's worth it listening to you for years. 
I just want to come back a little bit on the political side. Uh, we, uh, I'll make this as fast as I can. Is we, we have a group that we started to uh, inform the people of how to vote, how to do research, how to study, how to listen to radio, and because they're thoroughly mesmerized. Rod, Roger, you're losing me. What exactly is your main point? Our main, my main point is I, I need some advice and inspiration from you on how to further convince these people to, to act on their own. And which people? Mesmerized. Which, Richard, whoa, whoa, Roger, which people? Uh, the politicians that, that have been uh, BSing for years and years since I've been in high school, they're still in there. So, so you think that they're all liars and you think they're going to change? Uh, they'll never change. I don't think they're all liars. There's a few handful that... Right. Most of them are liars, and they, they've only gotten worse under Obama because he's a naked liar, and he's gotten away with it. So the other side decided to do it as well and shaft their own constituency, figuring there'll be no consequences. They just got put back into safe seats, and the drunk Boehner has a nice condo waiting for him on retirement. McConnell got, what, a, a billion dollar... What did he build? A bridge to nowhere in Kentucky? Do you remember that story? Exactly. Yes, I did. And he also turned his back on the people of Kentucky, and, they, and I don't even think it hit them yet. McConnell is the equivalent of a carpetbagger. He is not from Kentucky. He's from a grubber land. So you can talk about him all you want. We have a revolutionary in the White House getting away with murder. So they figure they'll do what they want and steal from the Treasury uh, with these grants and bridges, whatever. I don't know how you're going to change them. I know that the judges just, just stopped Obama. Isn't that good news? That is the best news I've ever heard. All right, so the answer to your question is in the courts. I've been waiting for seven years now for the courts to stop this regime. They just did. It finally went up to a federal appeals court, which is very unlikely the Supreme Court will overturn this federal appeals court, by the way. See, the, the Fifth Circuit upheld the local judge. And it's very unlikely that the Supreme Court's going to overturn the Fifth Circuit. Very unlikely, given the shape of this court. So I think that they're going to also stop his amnesty, by the way. I think they will. Which leads me to believe that when Obamacare is also found to be illegal and the work of a, a monomaniac, there's going to be hell in this country because him and Michelle and Al Sharpton and the gang will have the crowds going wild in the streets to burn things down again. Maybe they can burn hospitals down next. And that's why Roger, I stay, Roger, listen, I didn't give away one book today because my, my voice is bad. I have to focus only on the show. But I have enough books to give away for the rest of the week. I'm giving you a free copy of my novel, Countdown to Mecca. I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Hey, our Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. The only company I trust for wealth insurance, gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. It is the Savage Nation. It's 50 minutes after the hour. Let's go to the callers. WSBA Radio. Lenny, welcome to the program. What's on your mind, Lenny? Uh, 15 years in a waiting Dr. Savage, and I'm honored. I, um, I think the greatest story in America today is... Is simply, and it's the most underreported story, and it's the 80 to 75 to 80 percent continual out of wedlock birth rate in the African American community. Unless the media points its finger directly in the face of black America, we will need immigration to offset this insanity that's being unleashed on a, unleashed on a country. That's not good old fashioned racism, that is just pure statistical fact. Weird. Oh, wait, ho, 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 ho. So you're assuming that all immigrants are married and, and wonderful family members, right? I mean, that's your assumption. Uh, I would say 50 to 60 percent. I, I, don't, I mean, I know that's, I, I'm just taking an educated guess. Well, what you're saying is that immigration is good for us because Hispanics are generally family-oriented. I think that's what you're arguing, correct? I said the same thing myself. However, you have to put it within context. If that were true then how do you explain the 30% of all criminals in our prison system are illegal aliens who are arrested not for breaking immigration laws, by the way, but for committing felonies, other felonies? That, I, I can't argue with that fact. I'm not so saying... So all, they all don't come here to go to church and buy their daughter a new dress on Sunday. Some come here to rob, 
kill, murder, rape, drive drunk, uh, work in gangs, bring in drugs. So l let's not be Pollyannas about this. That's the problem. I'm all for immigration if they came in an orderly fashion, if we had an orderly immigration policy. And what, what would that mean? It would mean let's decide which immigrants we want, what countries of origin do we want them from, what religions do we prefer? Do we prefer Muslims, as Obama does? Or do we prefer religions that are compatible with the Judeo-Christian uh, ethos of this nation? You could certainly answer that question easily, right? Absolutely, doctor. So Obama hates the Judeo-Christian ethos, which is why he wants to flood America with Muslims from Syria, not Christians from Syria. And so that's a question. Then how many immigrants do we really need? What educational level do we want? for the immigrants. Don't you think that would be part of a rational immigration policy, a discussion? Of course it would be. We're not having that discussion. He's bringing in children who will never work in the society, or it's unlikely they'll work. They're going to be wards of the state most of their lives, whether it's direct welfare or college scholarships or whatever he gives them. Who's going to pay for all of this? That's an economic impossibility. We, have we probably have 15 years left on our welfare state, and it's finished. And when that, and when that day comes, what you're going to see, especially, and again, I mean, I, I, I'm, I'll just be honest, what's in my heart, what, what's going to happen, especially within the African-American community, we will see the abandonment of millions of children when there's no longer any free housing, free money, free food. That day is coming, and when that day happens, I, I fear martial law, because there's simply no way society can absorb that anymore. It's done. I mean, we've, uh, 15 years of being generous, I mean, I... I I'm not a Harvard-educated guy, but I can add. And, um, you know, I think, I mean, I've had well, a lot of... Aren't you encouraged today to learn that only a few hours ago the Fifth Circuit overturned, or rather upheld a lower court and overturned Obama's amnesty? Don't you feel good about that? Hallelujah. I feel great about that. Yes, I feel fantastic about that. I don't know, I don't know how the president is going to work at it. I mean, is he going to obey it? I mean, I mean, I guess he has to if he wants the Democrat Party to win next time, right? I mean, I don't I don't know what he has to do. I know that he's a rogue president. I know that he's the conductor of a train that's out of control. I know he's liable to take the train off the cliff. There's no predicting how this madman will run the motor car. Oh, he's drunk. I, my analogy to my children and my family is that in Washington, we have fools. We have fools at the wheel. We have fools running our country. And we do have a drunk driving a ship of state. I, I, I do agree with you. Well, I wouldn't say he's drunk. I would say he's a power mad man who has just been st slapped in the face by an appeals court, and it's a big appeals court. It's a big case. He was stopped in his tracks. The question now is, what will Loretta Lynch do? Remember he just installed her? Remember that? The replacement for Holder, and one of the first things she did was she didn't uphold the law. She went down to, I think, Baltimore. And she stirred up the masses saying that they're the oppressed masses. And she basically called the police the wrong party in Baltimore. And then the city erupted this weekend after she went there. So I'm not so optimistic that our attorney general will do the right thing when it comes to him if he breaks the law and refuses to follow the Fifth Circuit's uh, decision, frankly. But do you think, Dr. Savage, that that, I mean, those policies of unrestricted immigration as well as what the intellectual portion of I mean, the Democrat elite, don't you think they've acknowledged that black America won as a lost cause? And the only, way to, the only way to dent that is to displace, is to attempt to displace. I mean, these people are pragmatic people. When the, when the are you saying that the Democrat Party and their desire to flood America with Chinese, by the way, the number one immigrant group is Chi are Chinese, uh, flood America with Hispanics and Chinese is to displace Amer African Americans? Is that what you're saying? Oh, I, I, I've believed that for a long time, and I'm not crazy. I have honestly believed that because of the statistic. I mean, the statistics involved. When you look at just, again, well, out of that's That's sort of Malthusian, and I don't know that they're that Machiavellian. I, I like to use the two Ians at the same time, Ian and Ian. Yes, it's Malthusian, but I don't think that they're that Machiavellian. I think they're just appeasing the Hispanic mobs for votes. And I think that they're appeasing La Raza in particular because La Raza is running the White House in specific. Look up her name, Cecilia Munoz, M-U-N-O-Z. She went from being a Mexican street radical to living in the White House. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage.
Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk, borders, language, culture. And here he is, Michael Savage. And finally, while peaceful protests can be powerful, if we truly want to reform our criminal justice system, then we need to come together and do the hard work of changing our laws and policies to reflect our values. The hard work of burning a city down. That's the way to get it done, Michelle. Shame on you. Look what we have in the White House. Look what we have in the White House. Telling grad Well, Oberlin College to begin with is an embarrassment. When you say Oberlin, you know, it has a certain meaning to it. Oberlin. What does it mean? Oberlin means a, a university or a college, rather that brainwashes the children to the farthest degree of left-hoodedness. So she wants them to shape the revolutions of their time. Just think about that. Think about what that means. That's a first lady. Is that inspiring, telling children to shape a revolution? No, I don't understand how anyone can see that. By the way, Ferguson protesters are now protesting over not getting paid. You know, Sharpton is rent-a-mob type of thing. Well, it actually was true. Some of the protesters who looted, rioted, burned buildings, and overturned police cars in Ferguson, Missouri last year were promised payments of up to $5,000 per month to join the protests. Did you know this? It was a group called Moore, a successor to Acorn, and they offered them $5,000 a month to loot, riot, burn, and overturn police cars. I guess that's what Mrs. Obama means by... Uh, changing the laws, you know, you got to, you want to make an omelet, you got to break a few eggs. Well, anyway, when this group didn't pay them, they stiffed the protesters. The vermin launched a sit-in protest at their headquarters of Moore, and they're demanding their money. Can you imagine getting paid five thousand dollars a month for running around holding up a sign and burning down an occasional McDonald's? That's twelve hundred and fifty dollars a week. By the way, this group more is funded by liberal, psychotic billionaire George Soros. George Soros is, frankly, should be arrested by Interpol, in my opinion. He's a roving maniac who is out to destroy this country with a vendetta I'll never understand. They say that Soros is a Holocaust survivor. Why would a Holocaust survivor who made billions, if not more, on changing money in the back of the temple, meaning trading currencies, why would he have such a hatred for capitalism? Why would he have such a hatred for the America that took him in from the Holocaust? I'll never understand it. There's no answer to it other than liberalism is a mental disorder. But there's more to it than that. It's all about money. Never forget that the thing that motivates people from top to bottom is generally money. And when you look at George Soros, you've got to understand that if he's funding these protests and they're becoming more and more radicalized, there's a reason for it, and it has to be money. Meanwhile, Michelle Obama tells graduates to shape the revolutions. Shape the revolutions. What does she mean by that? What does she mean by shape the revolutions? Does anyone have any uh, ideas on that? So there she was, concerned about social justice as though she's still down with the people. Here's a woman who's such a hypocrite that she has 72 personal assistants in and around the White House catering to her every whim. And yet she's acting as though she's one of the little people in the streets of Baltimore. I mean, how much can you take of this crap? It's unbelievable to me. We have a crazy man as a conductor of the of the train of state, driving it as fast as he can, blowing the whistle, going through the stop signs and screaming race, 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 race. That's the problem. Meanwhile, the Middle East is burning. The bowling pin is waiting in the wings. And now the bowling pin, in order to appeal to the progressive left, which, as you know, progressive is the opposite of what they are. They're regressives. They want to take us back to 1917 in Russia. So when you hear progressive, think regressive, think the Bolshevik Revolution, 1917. Don't don't fall for the rhetoric. Everything's backwards. Blue states should be red states. Red states should have been blue states. And progressive should be regressive. Here she says that she's now worried about the 26-year-olds 
who are aging out of Obamacare, they should be sta allowed to stay on the system older than 26. Listen to this. You know, one of the problems, and I heard about this in Iowa, is what happens when a 26-year-old becomes a 27-year-old and is no longer eligible to be on his or her parents' policy. That was one of the best changes in the Affordable Care Act. And the fact is that a lot of young people aren't making the income they need yet to be able to afford their own health care. So we have to look mm -hmm. out to see what we're going to be able to do to help them. And what would that be, Mrs. Clinton? Perhaps taking the money that you and your husband have garnered into the Clinton Foundation and dispersing it to people under 35, let's say, so they can buy health care, or using it more for private jets and uh, yacht travel and fancy uh, mansions all over the world. What rubbish. It's the Bolshevik Revolution. Who's going to pay for it? Tell me who's going to pay for slackers who are staying at home, who don't have a job or don't want a job, never will have a job, and they want to stay on, on a state on a state run health care system. Who is going to pay for it? Again, they're targeting the middle class. Again, they're targeting the bourgeoisie. Once again, they're targeting the middle class. Uh, once again, they're targeting what was known in the in the Soviet era as the bourgeoisie. Nothing has changed under the sun. You have a hardcore class of Bolsheviks disguised as progressives who want to bring about a revolution. They're a long way towards achieving it, by the way. Obama's taking them very, very far. If he is not stopped, he will achieve a full-scale full revolution in this nation before 2016. That's my opinion. You have the liar of liars, the head of the, uh, the, the, the uh, I don't know what to call it, Imelda Marcos of American politics. That would be a mild statement. It's beyond comprehension. That this liar, with all the money they've made, says the deck is still stacked in favor of those at the top, as though we're we're so dumb. We don't know about the billions of dollars that have been poured into the Clinton scam. It's astounding to me that she's gotten this far, given the fact that she's a complete liar. She caused Benghazi to happen. She's all around bad, all around bad news. I don't believe she can win. And the reason the Dems and New York Times are turning on her is not because they don't like her. They're turning on her because they want someone more to the left than her to run for the presidency. You may not understand this. You may look back and see if Elizabeth Warren, Focahontas, wins the presidency, that maniac. If that maniac wins, God forbid, given the fact that the Republicans have almost no one running uh, of any note, if that maniac wins, you look back and say, I wish that Hillary had won. You see, you don't understand something here. We have a choice between two evil devils. If we only had a Republican nationalist running who got up once and said borders, language and culture, who got up and said English is the language of the land. When I'm president, I'm going to make it the official language. If you don't like it, then get out of the country. If he got up and said, I'm closing the borders, I'm putting the National Guard on the borders with Mexico, I'm closing the superhighways to Mexico, I'm ending a trade status with China, they're not getting it. Borders, language, culture. And he reaffirmed the culture of America. And tell us what the culture of America is. That man would win by a landslide. Can you name one Republican who's done that? No. And that's why I'm afraid that it's liable to be someone like uh, Focahontas or this guy O'Malley. Now, I don't know where they got him from all of a sudden. What, he looks good in a bathing suit now all of a sudden? So he's, he's a presidential material? Just because he's white, he's got an Irish name? You don't think he's capable of being a far-left radical? He is. Don't you understand that his politics are far-left radicalism? Let's make believe there was no breaking news where King Obama was blocked by a federal court with the music from Journey intercut with the revolutionary Angela Davis, Michelle Obama at Oberlin College over the weekend. To that is how you will rise above the noise and shape the revolutions of your time. That is how you will have a meaningful journey on those clamorous highways of life. And graduates, that is how you will carry on the proud legacy of this great institution for generations to come. So I'm here today because I'm proud of you all. I really am. I'm inspired by your commitment to service and social justice. And I'm, I'm impressed by the community that you all have created here. A warm, supportive, inclusive community that embodies the values that define this school. Today, I want to urge you to actively seek out the most contentious, polarized, gridlocked places you can find.
because so often throughout our history, those have been the places where progress really happens, the places where minds are changed, lives transformed, where our great American story unfolds. If it walks like a revolutionary, if it talks like a revolutionary, you're living through a revolution. But that's not the important thing. Is The important thing is they got stopped today. The system seems to be working. It's a very big story, a federal appeals court. Many of you have no faith in the courts. But it happened. Obama's amnesty was punched in the nose today. They upheld an injunction against his deportation ruling. It's the second major legal setback for the revolutionary in the White House, for the revolutionary administration that thinks it can function as a law unto itself. The Fifth Circuit said, not so fast. The judges said that you don't have the power to do this on your own. And you can't rig the system because you don't like the system. Now, there's many different reports on this. Federal appeals court deals blow to President Obama's amnesty, says Stephen Dinan at the Washington Times. The very left-wing Associated Press has a different headline. Court won't lift hold on Obama immigration action. No one knows what that means. You see how they how they write a headline that you can't even understand? So if the average moron, let's say, licking an ice cream cone right now at Disneyland, is walking around, he looks into a machine, a, 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 a machine, or he's in an airport and he gets beaten up with CNN news, they don't know what that means. Court won't lift hold on Obama immigration action. They say, well, oh, 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 I guess that's good for Obama. That's all they saw. This shows you the propaganda. But the only one who wrote the correct headline is me, Michael Savage. My headline is King Obama blocked by Fed court, and I have a picture of him on my website as a king, sitting on a royal chair. That's who he thinks he is, a king. That's all. What I want to do now is talk about something positive, my new novel, Countdown to Mecca, because it's out. I worked very hard on it. It's the last in the series. Many of you bought uh, the previous editions of A Time for War and Abuse of Power. It's a thriller. It's a novel. It's power fiction. For those people who like action, Countdown to Mecca is it. I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com, the only company I, Michael Savage, trust to buy my gold and silver from, SwissAmerica.com. The character in the White House, the evil man in the White House, the enemy of America in the White House is working around the clock to destroy us. That's why I'm on the air. You know what he's doing now? Palmyra in Syria fell to the Islamo-fascists. They now control half of Syria because he undermined Assad. They're taking over the whole Middle East. This lying POS in the White House has the nerve to say it's not a setback. Not at all. They're rampaging through the world. Now it gets even better. He wants to bring in thousands of Muslims from Burma. Muslims who want to be, who the Burmese want to kick out because they're troublemakers. You heard me write it down and send it to George Soros personally, Federal Express. Listen to what I just said to you. Burma is 90% Buddhist nation. They have a Muslim minority. The Muslim minority has been causing problems in Burma for a thousand years. They are now wanting to resettle the so-called Rohingya. You've got to listen to what Obama is doing, and there's only one reason he's doing it. He is overwhelming the nation with Muslim immigrants to weaken the Christian majority. These Rohingya cannot work. They have multiple wives. They're unemployable. They'll be on welfare. They will wreck our schools. Why the hell is he allowed to do it? Listen to this idiot, Marie Barf. I think the Malaysians and the Indonesians have requested uh, some help resettling people. We're taking a careful look at the proposal. We're prepared to take a leading role uh, in any UNHCR organized multi-country effort to resettle the most vulnerable refugees. Here I note go. that more than a, a thousand more Rohingya vulnerable. have already been resettled. Turn it off. I can't take this idiot. If there were war crime trials, she'd be up on the docket along with Obama for what they're doing to this country. This is the last days of the United States playing out right in front of our eyes. Should the United States play a leading role in absorbing Muslim refugees from Burma? Why would Obama overwhelm the nation with Muslim immigrants? There's only one answer. To further weaken the Christian majority who he hates 
down to his last strand of DNA. They will not work because they can't work. They don't speak the language. They'll never learn it. Many of them have multiple wives. It's part of their religion. They're unemployable. They'll be on welfare. They'll flood our schools with children who will require scarce educational resources to go for ESL, English as a second language. Then they'll force your daughter to take diversity training so she's not mad at them in the classroom. Why would you bring in Muslims from Burma? Why would you bring in Muslims who are uneducated, can't work, multiple wives, unemployable, they're going to go on welfare, they're going to require schools and police and doctor care? Why would you bring them in unless you wanted to destroy the country? Answer, because he wants to destroy the country. Along with the vermin in the ACLU, are you ready for this one? The ACLU in El Paso, Texas, has renamed illegal immigrants international commuters. I'll repeat that again, because nobody can believe this. On May 13th, Dozens of members of the ACLU, the Anti-Christian Liberties Union, on the U.S. side of the Santa Fe Street border bridge in El Paso, were handing out pamphlets to illegal aliens who they refer to as international commuters from Mexico. Obama has destroyed America. He is going to destroy it so it's unrecognizable unless he is stopped. He is a thug. Obama is a criminal thug. Do you understand this? He is the thug. Who gives him the authority to do this to this country? Who? The invisible Republican Party. It's very hard to navigate through the confusion of our world, isn't it? Isn't it really hard to wake up every day? I know a lot of people say they can't do it. They don't want to do it. Intelligent people turn the other way. They don't want to hear this anymore. They figure it's finished, it's over, a gang took over the country. A criminal, anti-Christian gang took over America. And they're going to destroy it no matter what we do. I don't give up yet. I'm waiting for the day that they take Obama out in handcuffs. I'm waiting for the day that finally he's arrested for crimes against America. Now, I realize it's just a fantasy and it won't happen because the other party is exactly the same. Except on fiscal matters. Yeah, I get it, yeah. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. But I think the system is starting to work. It seems to me that the system established long before these two radicals took over America will eventually reign in these revolutionaries. What am I talking about? King Obama blocked by federal court. That's my headline on michaelsavage.com. It came out minutes ago. I had a full show prepared that had nothing to do with amnesty for illegals. But guess what happened? The system seems to be working. A federal appeals court, that's the Fifth Circuit, which is very conservative, by the way, ruled against President King Obama and said that, no, you can't make immigration law on your own. You're not a king. The U.S. Court of Appeals for the Fifth Circuit ruled in favor of Texas, which had sued to stop the amnesty for illegal aliens on all key points. They found that Obama's amnesty likely broke the law governing how big policies are to be written. Here's what the judges wrote. Quote, the public interest favors maintenance of the injunction. Now, what this means is that the revolutionary and his wife and the minions of revolutionaries around them have nothing but contempt for our Congress, contempt for the people, contempt for the Constitution, are going to have to scheme a new way to flood America with the illegals. But for right now, King Obama has been blocked by a federal circuit court of appeals. It's a huge story. And I have to say that it looks to me as though the system is beginning to work to stop the revolutionary regime. The only thing standing between us, meaning justice, uh, and the people, are the Republicans. And I'll tell you more about that in a little while. Now, my show today was not going to be about this, but this is huge news. My show is going to be on another subject. It was going to be about the revolutionaries running the country. And my show is going to be entitled, If It Walks Like a Revolutionary. If It Talks Like a Revolutionary, It Is a Revolutionary. And we were going to play Michelle Obama's revolution-inspiring revolution, revolution inspiring speeches at Oberlin College. Once again, she did it. She can't help it. She comes out and she becomes Angela Davis every time she gives a graduation speech. Although she complained about the fact that people smeared her as being Angela Davis, she's sure doing a good job of enacting the Angela Davis within. I mean, she's channeling the Angela Davis. All she needs is a bandolier of bullets on her back, uh, over her chest, rather. Now... Something else you should know. 
I am sick as a dog. If I were a pilot, I wouldn't fly the plane today. Yeah, but since I'm a talk show host and your life is not in my hands, just your mind, your mind is in my hands, you're going to hear a subdued, savage nation show today. I had a choice to stay off the air again. I have been hit with a, the most severe flu of my entire life. I am throwing everything known to mankind at it. And I'm talking about all of my alternative medical knowledge. I'm talking about uh, amoxicillin for a, a severe strep throat that nothing touched and I couldn't swallow. So I'm using allopathic, I'm using homeopathic, I'm using herbal medicine, and I'm using pizza and garlic, which is my mainstay, mainstay cure for everything. Uh, and I'm going to tell you a little bit more about a, a flu RX from my dear friend Richard A. Cunyon, MD, who is probably the greatest unsung uh, genius in the history of nutrition in this country. He's the last of the Mohegans. He knows more about nutritional medicine than anybody in the world, and he's completely unknown. It's sad because he's written many books, but he's not really a businessman, which is not to his deficit. It's to his credit. And I'm going to read you a two-page letter he sent to me, to Michael Savage, on his opinion, his Rx for my flu. So I've got that to deal with. I've got all the other stories. Michelle Obama to grads telling graduates to shape the revolution. King Obama blocked by a federal court. We have so many other stories. I may as well give you a hint of them because you're not going to believe these. Look at this one. Last week, and I missed this because I was out with the flu on Thursday, Friday, I think, right? I came in on Thursday. I shouldn't have. Uh, Obama called himself an honorary member of the tribe. That means he's Jewish. Uh, I don't doubt that because he behaves like a liberal Jew. So in that sense, I agree with him. As you well know, liberal Jews are the most suicidal portion of the Jewish people. Self-hating and suicidal. Everybody knows that. And then, of course, we have this, which you should not, you should not uh, uh, omit. Robert De Niro gave a speech over the weekend to NYU grads. What's shocking about this is not that another actor was chosen to give another speech instead of a scholar or instead of a, a Nobel Prize winning scientist. Have you noticed what happened to our colleges under the progressives? They almost never invite a distinguished person to give a commencement address. Forget politics. When have you last heard of a Nobel Prize winning chemist or scientist giving a commencement address? The answer is never. Not since this gang took over America. Instead, it's one communist, progressive, psychotic drug addict after another. It's either a president, the president's wife, or a, a left-wing senator. I've never seen anything like it. It's never happened in American history. So I said to you, if it walks like a revolutionary, if it talks like a revolutionary, you're living through a revolution. So De Niro gives a speech to NYU grads where he says, well, you're going to suffer because you're in the arts. Get used to it. And he said, how are you going to cope with that suffering? He said, I hear that Valium and Vicodin work. Good advice, Robert. We'd expect nothing less from an actor. We're going to also talk about medical marijuana. We're going to talk about all the topics of the day. Let me invite you to call the show at 855-407-282. The only thing I don't want to hear from you is any remedies for a flu. Please do not call us with remedies. I know more than you do about it. And at a certain point, nothing works. You just have to pray to God that all your remedies collectively work. So let's begin at the beginning. Let's make believe there was no breaking news where King Obama was blocked by a federal court. And now let's begin with the music from Journey, intercut with the revolutionary Angela Davis, Michelle Obama at Oberlin College over the weekend. See, that is how you will rise above the noise and shape the revolutions of your time. That is how you will have a meaningful journey on those clamorous highways of life. And graduates, that is how you will carry on the proud legacy of this great institution for generations to come. So I'm here today because I'm proud of you all. I really am. I'm inspired by your commitment to service and social justice. And I'm, I'm impressed by the community that you all have created here. A warm, supportive, inclusive community that embodies the values that define this school. Today, I want to urge you to actively seek out the most contentious, polarized, gridlock places you can find. Because so often throughout our history, those have been the places where progress really happens. 
the places where minds are changed, lives transformed, where our great American story unfolds. If it walks like a revolutionary, if it talks like a revolutionary, you're living through a revolution. Welcome back to the Savage Nation. Why can't she shut her mouth? Why must this left-wing fanatic who got so lucky based upon a society that was an upheaval that she rode the wave through the seat and through affirmative action to get where she is and it's still not good enough for her? She and her husband will not be happy until this country is in ruins. Over the weekend, Baltimore had the worst murder spree, I think, in modern history, in its history. And that's all because of what? Do you think it came out of a vacuum? Isn't that part of the revolutionary plan? Did you see the headline uh, about your Baltimore? What happened? Because of Obama, Holder, Al Sharpton. You notice they dummied up Al Sharpton, if you notice that. You notice they dummied up that rat? What, well, they sent him to Guyana for a few weeks on a, on a junket? Where is that rat Al Sharpton? He burned down half two cities in the country from his fat mouth, attacking police, supporting the vermin. Where is he? Where's Al Sharpton? Nowhere to be seen. Welcome to the... Uh, New World Order, Baltimore's bloodiest Memorial Day weekend after they neutered the police, that that moron mayor of theirs, that attorney general and a mayor, whatever their state attorney, some state attorney, 12 dead, 43 wounded in shootings across Chicago over holiday weekend. Do you understand there's a revolution going on in this country? Do you understand the thugs are now roaming the streets free to roam because the police have been neutered? by the revolutionaries in the White House. Do you understand this? I guess not. And by the way, I know this. This is a fact. Most people are not even home yet this week. They're, they're off this week. Dead, dead as a doornail. That's licking ice cream somewhere. I don't know. They're licking ice cream, walking with the shorts. Mr. and Mrs. John Q. Schmuck. They're on vacation somewhere. Every other day, the children are out of school for another training session. They put the child on Adderall or Ritalin. They take the child on another vacation. The child comes out an incompetent moron who is number 75 in the world in math and science, but he's way up on his lesbian, gay, transgendered, uh, whatever, uh, knowledge. He's way up there on LGBT and, wait, global warming. Him and the Pope know as much about global warming as my dog Teddy does. But we had good news today, didn't we? because a federal court blocked Obama's amnesty for illegal aliens. If you care to join the program on this Health to Skelter Day, the phone number is 855-400-7282. I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. My Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. It's the only company I trust to protect my wealth. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. The great moments of our history are not decades in our past. They're happening right now, today, in our lifetimes. Just think about the folks who are winning those battles state by state, city by city, to ensure that everyone in this country can marry the person they love. Think about how just 10 years ago, gay marriage was legal and just... You know, I can't listen to her whiny, lecturing voice anymore. I met some people over the weekend. I, I, I don't even know if I was out this weekend. I was so sick. So maybe I dreamed it. And one guy said to me, whatever he hears, her whiny, her voice, she, he turns the show off. They won't listen to her. They won't listen to him anymore. They hate them. They're actually hated. You know that they're a hated pair? And if it wasn't for this machine, this billion-dollar machine around them, this propaganda machine, they'll go down in history as the most divisive hated pair in the history of the presidency. But that's not the important thing is. The important thing is they got stopped today. The system seems to be working. It's a very big story, a federal appeals court. Many of you have no faith in the courts. But it happened. Obama's amnesty was punched in the nose today, an hour ago. They upheld an injunction against his deportation ruling. It's the second major legal setback for the revolutionary in the White House for the revolutionary administration that thinks it can function as a law unto itself. The Fifth Circuit said, not so fast. The judges said that you don't have the power to do this on your own. And you can't rig the system because you don't like the system. Now, there's many different reports on this. Federal appeals court deals blow to President Obama's amnesty, says Stephen Dinan at the Washington Times. 
the very left-wing Associated Press has a different headline. Court won't lift hold on Obama immigration action. No one knows what that means. You see how they, how they write a headline that you can't even understand? So if the average moron, let's say, licking an ice cream cone right now at Disneyland, is walking around, he looks into a machine, a, 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 a machine, or he's at an airport and he gets beaten up with CNN News, they don't know what that means. Court won't lift hold on Obama immigration action. They say, well, oh, 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 I guess that's good for Obama. That's all they saw. This shows you the propaganda. But the only one who wrote the correct headline is me, Michael Savage. My headline is King Obama blocked by Fed court. And I have a picture of him on my website as a king sitting on a royal chair. That's who he thinks he is, a king. That's all. 855-400-7282. What do you want to talk about? My flu prescription. The, I got to play the Robert De Niro piece. I shouldn't wait. I shouldn't wait on this. So he gives a speech over the weekend at NYU, another another institution of lower living. It was once a decent school. NYU was always a B school. It was never an A. At, at one point in its history, it had become a B. It's now fallen back to dis, to some level of disrespect in the university community. So who do they pick to give a graduation speech? An actor. All right, they can't pick a scholar. They can't find a, an alumnus who did something distinguished in a field of science. They have to go to an actor, and he's a fine actor, by the way. I like his acting. His politics are as stupid as the character he plays in the gangster movies. His politics match that of some of the moronic Italian gangsters he plays in some of his movies, whose, whose only answer to anything is beat, beat a person up. So let's listen to Robert De Niro, the genius now, giving a speech at NYU in 25. Thank you for inviting me to celebrate with you today. Tisch graduates, you made it. And you're f***ed. Now, did you hear what he just Think said? about that. A, hold it, hold it. He had to use the word F word, the F word, to show how cool he is. It's very sad when an old man has to revert to the F word to get the attention of the young potheads in the audience. He's, oh, and you're effed. Think about that. And the idiots laugh, of course. It's a laugh line. It goes on to 26. This is the next one. Listen. You discovered a talent, developed an ambition, and recognized your passion. When you feel that, you can't fight it. You just go with it. When it comes to the arts, passion should always trump common sense. You aren't just following dreams. You're reaching for your destiny. You're a dancer, a singer, a choreographer, a musician, a filmmaker, a writer, a photographer, a director, a producer, an actor, an artist. Yeah, you're f So you got to say the F word again in case you missed it the first time. This shows you the level of intellect going on in the colleges today. Not a PhD in chemistry or microbiology. Not, not someone of distinction. Instead, someone who plays low-life uh, killers and actors very well, by the way. Then he tops it off by telling them to become drug addicts, in my estimation, in the next one. Listen to this now. It's inevitable. It's what graduates call the real world. You'll experience it auditioning for a part or a place in a company. It'll happen to you when you're looking for backers for a project. You'll feel it when doors close on you while you're trying to get attention for something you've written and when you're looking for a directing or a choreography job. How do you cope with it? I hear that Valium and Vicodin work. I, I'm going to rest my case. The man plays pimps, gangsters, villains of the lowest kind. He made a fortune playing villains. And I've enjoyed every one of his villainous roles. Can you explain to me why a university would invite this man to give us a speech at a, to a university class? Is that inspiring? Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage.